This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. This morning we have a complaint of a produce walk-in that is not working properly. Uh, it's a little bit dirty, but here's the interesting thing. They said last night it was like 50 something degrees, but this morning everything's fine. So they still wanted us to come out, which is all good. You know, um, that's what we're here for. So I'm gonna jump into it and see what we can figure out. It is 11.06 a.m. The first thing I'm gonna check, first thing that comes to mind is the defrost timer because the customer said that it wasn't working last night and it's working this morning. So. What the heck? Someone's got this defrost clock wired backwards. It's fine, I mean, they have it wired backwards to where the pins are out is normal operation and the pins are in is defrost. That's not correct. But I mean, you can make it work because the defrost clock has a normally open and a normally closed contact, but someone clearly doesn't understand how this defrost timer works. Anyways, um, so it's 11 p.m. My defrost clock says 1 a.m. I'm not liking that right off the bat. And they were saying that last night. It turns though, freely, so I don't see a problem with that. When you're looking at these defrost clocks, look at the triangle. Forget the hands. Triangle points to the time. Interesting. All right, we uh, are hooked up. I've got my suction port hooked up downstairs and my suction probe, get evaporator super heat. This one's hooked up on the liquid line. So measure quick right now. Uh, our system is pumped down. It's not running at the moment. You can see our return dry bulb temperature is 39 degrees. Um, and obviously everything else really doesn't matter until the system turns on. So we need to see at what temperature the system turns back on. The unit is not in a defrost right now. For giggles, I will go ahead and hook up my outdoor air probe. My suction port was not on correctly downstairs. I put one on up here and I'm getting 53 PSI. The one downstairs is reading 14 PSI. So it's obviously not depressing the Schrader down there. We are running a clear sight glass. It's gonna be very difficult for you guys to see this clear sight glass, but let's see. Yeah, so we're running a clear sight glass. The system's turning on and off. Everything seems to be okay. This is interesting. Very interesting. Let's let the system operate for a little bit. So as the system has been running, the sight glass is slowly starting to flash every once in a while. But it's intermittent. It's just every once in a blue moon. We're still gonna let it pull down and see what happens. All right, my system just satisfied at 34 degrees, and then it looks like it's coming on right at 40 degrees. So we're gonna watch it go through another cycle again. Um, I noticed, I mean, everything seemed to be okay. It was a rather short cycle time. So I'd imagine the system is probably a little oversized just by the way it pulled down real quick. But um, yeah, I mean, nothing is jumping out at me saying there's a problem. So we're just gonna watch it for a little bit and see if we have a repeat issue again. I will say that, um, the evaporator downstairs is a little bit dirty. I'm probably not gonna clean that today. Um, that's something I would probably talk to them about. We'll come back out. I'm not gonna waste my time on overtime. Uh, plus, it gives me a chance to come back and evaluate the system again to make sure everything's operating properly. So we're just gonna watch it. All right, we just turned back on. Box temp came up to like 43 degrees this time. That's interesting. Kind of makes me wonder if we have a temperature controller issue. System's running though. So that's interesting. So the first time we came on at 39 degrees, this time we came on at 42 degrees. Makes me wonder about the temperature controller. Maybe we have a temperature controller that's starting to fail. So we're gonna keep watching the box. It's not a race. We're gonna watch another cycle. See how long it takes to turn off and then uh, see what it turns on next time. Here we go again. 30 sight glass. Let's see what our super superheat's at when it's flashing. Our superheat's only 11 degrees when the sight glass is flashing. It's not like it's flooding. But then it clears up. So I, I think we're gonna leave it be, but it's just maybe the liquid's building up in the condenser or something. Interesting. This unit doesn't have a head pressure control valve at all. 
it's just fan cycling. And also it's gonna be hard to see that actually cycle too, but. All right, we shut off at 34 again. I'm trending right now and I wanna see what it turns back on at, so we're just gonna wait and see. For the first time it turned back on at 39, second time it turned back on at 42, I think. 43, somewhere in there, and so we're gonna see where it goes to this time. Customer's complaint was last night, got up to 50 degrees in the box. All right, and we're cutting in at 42 again. So this is looking like there's a temp control issue. Uh, we're gonna probably jump down there and go take a look at it. Heck, I know I'm gonna change the uh, temp control. It, the style that's down there, I've said before, I don't like it, it's just a crappy controller. So I'm probably gonna go in with a key to therm temp plus defrost controller, which will eliminate this defrost clock from the question. So uh, plus the defrost clock, I mean, you know, it'll work fine without it, but it's not pumping the system down, it's just shutting off the compressor. So if I put that key to therm 10 plus defrost controller, it'll, uh, it'll um, you know, pump it down every time it goes into defrost now too. So I'm gonna go ahead and unwire this. I already turned off the power switch. I'll verify we have no power. We'll unwire this, remove this guy completely, and then just throw that uh, key to therm downstairs. I pulled the defrost clock out of the picture. I still haven't tested all the capacitors. I'll do that when I come back up, but I wanna make sure I'm letting it run right now, and I wanna see it satisfy. That way I can make sure I didn't mess up the wiring at all. Um, from Without really thinking about it, it was pretty simple. I just removed one wire and wire nutted two other wires. So there we go. Unit pumped down and shut off so we know that my wiring is correct. So now we're gonna go install the temperature controller with defrost downstairs. Uh, this particular control is some weird foreign brand. It comes in the cold pack slash RDI walk-ins. I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. Like I said, put a key to therm, temp plus defrost controller and hopefully be done with it. The only difference is, is this one is just a switch and on the key to therm, I'm gonna need a neutral. So it's all good. I'm assuming this is 115 volt evaporative coil. But the plus side is, is the key to therm 10 plus defrost can work on a 208 volt circuit and a 120 volt circuit, so. I just got back from vacation and I actually cleaned my van before I went. I wouldn't call it vacation. I was at the AHR show. It was really work, but I cleaned my van. I mean, it's not perfect. You know, there's still a pile of stuff back here, but on the rare occasion that my van is clean, it sure does make it nice when you could just walk out here and you know where your SJ cord is and temp controls are right over here. So it does make a difference having a clean van. But again, I'll be honest with you. Mine's usually not clean. This is pretty darn clean for my van. This is, uh, the controller. Um, I need to get some electrical fittings and a uh, SJ core connector to go to the bottom of the control to keep it a watertight connection. I, hopefully I have one, we'll see. When I am wiring these, um, instead of trying to shove multiple wires, I do individual wires and then just do a wire nut and there's three connections because I'm using a three wire cord here. And then I take the ground wire or the green one and I tape it off and use it as my uh, switched leg. So. The, the green wire has black tape on it. It's going to the normally open terminal. Uh, black incoming line voltage comes in and splits off to um, the power of the temp control and to power the common terminal of the contact. And then uh, neutral or common basically comes up to the obviously neutral terminal. That's how I roll. I, I like these key to therm temp controls. They really are pretty versatile and I've had very good luck with them. Not very many failures, if any. Nothing super fancy. We're all wired in. I still gotta clean up with zip ties and all that good stuff, but we need to turn it on and hope it doesn't blow up in our face. Let's see what happens. Please don't blow up. Starts in a defrost. Evaporator fan motors are on. T5. We're gonna set that down to 35. Differential. I want the differential to three. Hold that down until it goes away. I didn't hold the enter button long enough. Compressor starts per hour. We're gonna change that to zero. There we go. Defrost per day. We're gonna leave that at six. Defrost time. We're gonna leave that at fifteen. Everything else is alarms. 
don't need to worry about any of that other stuff. Solenoid valve works. We're on and running. Now I just need to clean some things up. Okay, controls installed. Back up and over there. And then uh, sensing bulbs installed to where I have a loop on it so water doesn't drip down into the sensor. I purposely did it like that. And I have it pulled away from the back wall so it's not touching the metal surface. Just getting air temperature. So we're just gonna wait for the box to come down to temp, start putting the side panels on, cleaning it up. All right, it's been about four days since I was last here. Uh, I was here on the weekend and yeah. So um, I came back out, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this evaporator. And it's funny, cause I get here and I left my clamp here. It was still clamped to the suction line and it still has power. So it's been sitting there running for four days. Granted, the battery's going dead. It's flashing red, but still, that's a trip. This thing still has power. Awesome. Anyways, uh, yeah, so we're gonna get a water hose out and uh, uh, get this guy cleaned up. All right, so it's really not horrendous, but there's quite a bit of lint on there and it's actually built up inside the coil too. What I'm gonna do is I use this guy right here, long brush. Uh, I just get this at Home Depot, but I'll throw a link in the show notes and I uh, try to brush off the bulk of it And then I'll give it a rinse and then we're gonna flush the drain too. We've got a drain nipple right there We're gonna go through and make sure that everything's good because we don't want all that lint to just plug up the drain drains flowing Just to be safe. I'm gonna give it a spray from underneath Let's see if there's anything stuck we can Speed it up in here. Looks like it's okay. Oh, yeah, some chunks are coming out. So we're gonna let it keep going and then I'll back flush it from the other end. Really cool thing about the uh, job link probes is the ability, and, and coupled with Measure Quick, the ability to have my probes down in the box that's about, I don't know, 20 feet below me, um, and have everything up here and be able to sync with my tablet. Cool thing about Measure Quick 2 is uh, you can have multiple probes. So I've got a discharge line temperature probe, liquid line probe, suction line probe. You know, you can do all kinds of stuff. I've got supply air, return air. Um, over here, I've got outside air. All wireless, so I dig that. And it just, I mean, you can do everything without this stuff, but it just puts all the information in one single place, so it's really nice. Everything's looking good. Sight glass is running clear. Um, a lot of times my suction pressure, according to Measure Quick, is a little bit low, but I'm not too concerned about it. It's actually pumping down at the moment, but a lot of times what happens is these coils aren't matched properly. Um, oftentimes people will oversize the condensing unit and you know, you, you, you de necessarily don't always meet your target 10 degree TD. But everything's looking good. Box is maintaining temp, coils clean. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put everything together and wrap this one up. All right, so the original complaint happened on a weekend. It was an overtime call and the customer said the box temp got really high. But when I got there, it was working fine. Um, so those are always peculiar ones. You know, again, big picture diagnosis, right? We don't just assume that, oh, you know, they just made a mistake. They shouldn't have called me. I stood there and I watched it and I watched it multiple cycles and I evaluated everything. Okay. I'm always preaching this big picture diagnosis, but it really, I find that it helps me so much. And I, you know, remember I make these videos for my own employees, so I'm preaching to them too. Like, you know, just step back. All right. So I watched it the first cycle. It seemed okay. But the second and third cycle, it kept coming on higher and higher when it would turn back on. That indicated to me that it was more than likely a temperature controller issue. So I made an educated guess, all right? Very important term, educated guess. I presented the customer with the facts and I said, look, here's the deal. You said it wasn't working. I came here, it was working okay, but I noticed that every once in a while, the temp control, the cut-in temperature goes higher and higher. Went ahead and got their opinion about them, gave them my opinion, said, you know what? I really think this temp control is the problem and I recommended replacing the temperature controller. Went ahead and eliminated the defrost clock while I was in there because the new Kita Therm Temp Plus defrost had defrost built in and it was a better defrost strategy because now it was controlling the liquid line solenoid valve down at the evaporator coil. You know, systems will run fine if the defrost clock shuts off the compressor without pumping it down or turning off a liquid line solenoid valve, 
but you do have the potential to have some issues with refrigerant flood back or the refrigerant migrating, uh, I shouldn't say flood back, but the refrigerant migrating up to the compressor and then causing like, a, um, you know, the compressor to have a hard time starting. You know, so it's the best strategy that, I, in my opinion, is to go ahead and have a complete pump down system and then have the defrost clock control the pump down solenoid wherever that's at. So that way it stops the refrigerant flow. So we have it set up that way. Now, um, <clears throat> I did say that the evaporator coil was dirty and I used that uh, as an opportunity to go ahead and come back because I didn't want to clean that thing on overtime anyways. I was I really wanted to just go home. Plus, I brought it to the customer's attention. You know, hey, I'm going to spend another hour and a half cleaning this thing. Uh, two hours actually. Um, so why don't you go ahead and let me uh, come on back? And they were cool with it, you know? So it gave me an opportunity. I came back, I think I said in the video, like four days later, went through it, everything. They were super stoked. When I came back, they said it's been working fine, no other issues, but I went ahead and cleaned it up, flushed out the drains. Very important when you're cleaning those evaporator coils to make sure that whatever you brush down in that drain pan, you get out as much of the big stuff, you rinse it, and I flush the drain forwards and backwards a couple times just to make sure that we got all any sediment that was stuck in the drain line, and everything was good. So we called this one quits, and the customer's been happy. It's now been three weeks, I think, since I did that call and all is well. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Do me a favor, share these. If you guys like these videos, share them with whoever you think would enjoy them too, whoever you think would help. Um, do me a favor, uh, leave me a comment down in the bottom. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Could I have done something better? I'm always willing to improve and I'm looking to improve. So give me some feedback. Um, other than that, guys, I will uh, catch you guys on the next one. Okay.